hallelujah. Oh, I wonder if someone can stand to their feet and let's lift our hands and let's press into God's presence this morning. Oh, God, we need you to move in this service this morning, God. Oh, hallelujah, 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 Jesus. Oh, we love you, God. We love you, God. We love you, God. Oh, we need you, Jesus. We need you, Jesus. We need you, God. Oh, come on, Calvary. Let's let a praise ring out in our hearts. Thank you, God, for all that you've done. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, when I think back over my life, God, and I think things over, God, oh, I can truly say that I've been blessed. Come on, somebody. How many of you have a testimony? Oh, how many of you have a thank you on your lips? How many of you have a thank you in your heart? Oh, that God didn't leave you like you used to be. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, I was lost. I was down. I was depressed. I was suicidal, God. But, Lord, you brought me out. Oh, you saved my soul, God. Oh, hallelujah. I was addicted to drugs, God, but you helped me. Oh, how many of you can testify that God has been there for you time and time and time again? Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I was, I was thinking the other day, the men of God in the Bible would build altars whenever something would happen in their lives. Something significant would take place. Noah would build an altar after the flood. Jacob would build the altar when he saw the angels ascending and descending in Bethel. Abraham would, would build multiple altars in the Bible. Moses would build an altar after Amalek. God told him, build an altar. The altar was significant in meaning, right here my life changed. Right here God touched me. Right here he had a hedge of protection around me. I've heard it said many times that when the devil, he likes to remind you of your past, that you turn around, you remind him of his future. But I submit to you that when the devil reminds you of your past, say, come on, devil, let's go take back past my altars. You see, right here at this altar was when I got the Holy Ghost. Right here at this altar was when I was healed. You see, right here at this altar, the doctor told me something was impossible. And now I get to hold the hand of a daughter and a son. You see, right here at this altar, devil, one week before my brother passed away, he was speaking in tongues and getting renewed of the Holy Ghost. I submit to you, hey, sometimes you need to take the devil past those altars. Sometimes you need to say, hey, devil, hey, you thought you had me one, but right here at this altar, God changed my life. Right here at this altar, hey, I was suicidal, but I prayed back through in the Holy Ghost. Hey, right here at this altar, this is where my name got changed. Right here, I was depressed and on medication, but I, got, I met an altar. I met Jesus at an altar, and he touched my life, and I'm no longer on medication. Oh, Calvary, you are victorious. You are an overcomer. You are a peculiar people in a chosen generation. Just take the devil past those altars and say, you don't have no hold on me. I'm not ashamed of my past because my past, I'm now a new man. Oh, come on, put your hands together and give them praise. Oh, we love you, God. We love you, God. We love you, God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Changed me, darkness held me down, but Jesus pulled me out. I'm no longer bound. I'm so glad He changed me. See, I'm now a new creation in Christ. The old has gone, there's no life. I live by faith.
what I was, but you saw what I could be. Thank you for the blood of Jesus. Thank you for covering me. Thank you, Lord, for writing my name in that book of life. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Sunday morning in 2024. Why don't you lift up your voice right now and magnify him for how good he is, how great he is, how awesome he is in this house. Come on. 
if there's anything that we need in 2024 is a demonstration of the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all those that are afar off. What? The demonstration of the power of His Spirit. That life-changing ability that makes your life want to turn around. That gives you goosebumps. That makes you... Pick up your head, even when you're looking at the ground. The ability to make you whole. The ability to make you right. Somebody love him right now. Somebody magnify him right now for how awesome he is. Oh, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Clap your hands unto the Lord and love him right now. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Come on, I wish somebody right now would just feel after the presence of the Lord. Amen. Magnify him for how good he is right now. Oh, yeah, just love him right now for a moment. I believe that's all right if we just worship the Lord for just a moment and we magnify him for how good he has been to us. Oh, we Hallelujah, hallelujah. It feels good in the house on Sunday morning. Amen. I'm so thankful to be here today. Hallelujah. You can be seated just for a moment here. We've got some announcements to make. I do want to say uh, thank you for everybody being at Calvary today. We are so thankful for everyone that is here. And uh, so thankful for what God's going to do in this service. I'm believing that God is going to move in this service. Amen. And change lives. I just, I just know that God's got the ability to do that. Amen. And it's not beyond His ability to speak a word into somebody's heart and spirit today. Amen. So in a moment like this, I like to have my ear just perked up ready for His voice. Amen. And I'm thankful for that today. We don't want to forget about service tonight at 6 p.m. and prayer at 5.15 Let's be here for prayer and pray in the Holy Ghost. Amen. And um, we also have a dinner fundraiser tonight after service. Uh, it's going to be a pasta dinner directly after service. And it's going to help uh, with all of our expenses for our, our youth to go to Panama City. Um, and the cost for this will be $5 for children and $8 for the adults and uh, we want to go and be there tonight to support them going to Panama City. And so directly after service tonight, if we can get some men that will go back there into the fellowship hall and help us set up tables and chairs to prepare for that dinner tonight, that would be awesome. That would be just fantastic if we could get back there and just set up tables and chairs. Some men that are willing to go back there directly after service. Um, another thing that we have coming up is this trip to Panama City. And uh, for, for those that are wanting to go, we're needing you to turn in your name to Sister Hannah DeReese and Sister Courtney Flint by next Sunday, July the 28th. And the cost of this trip will be 45 plus money uh, to eat along the way, so we'll want to go ahead and prepare for that. Mark your calendars and get ready for next Sunday to have those names turned in. At this time, we do want to take up our offering, and uh, well, I just I just feel like this is such a special time to be able to give to the Lord and give to the things of God. If we could all stand right now as they are making their way up here, we're going to pray over this offering and ask God to bless each and every one of us. Let's pray the prayer of faith in this house right now. Father, we trust you. We believe you today. We thank you, Lord. I pray right now, Lord, that as each and every one of us give, I pray, Lord, that you would bless us, Lord. Bless our efforts. Bless our giving. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Why don't you magnify the Lord as you come up here and give?
not what you used to be. Amen. Aren't you thankful for the day that God found you and picked you up out of sin, turned your life around? I think we ought to just give the Lord praise together. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to think about where you were when the Lord found you. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you today. Hallelujah. Amen. And thank God for a, another chance to be in church on a Sunday morning to be with the good people of God. And then I'm thankful for our guests that are here today. We want you to know we're glad you're here. We're thankful for all of you that have taken time to join us. you have your Bible this morning, turn with me to the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, in verse 12. Ephesians chapter 6, and uh, beginning at verse 12, I'm going to read a familiar passage of scripture this morning, and I want to do my best to obey the Lord, do what God put on my heart today, and uh, we... We're, uh, this last week, my family, we were at the Peak Conference in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and we had a great time there. And yesterday evening, we had a late light out of Tulsa coming back to Lafayette, and uh, so we killed time all day, and uh, we, we went to get into our rental van last night, <clears throat> only to find out that our key was locked inside of our rental van, because the key fob was dead, and the van didn't know there was a key inside, so needless to say, uh, we, uh, we had to finally settle on Papa Lock, and by the time they got there, our airplane was gone. But I said, I'm going to be in church tomorrow morning. <laughs> and so we were nine and a half hours away at that point. But uh, hallelujah. Hey, if you see them repoing a rental van out there, <clears throat> just know they, they came looking for the rental van. But uh, we are here at church. We got, got here at about 5 a.m. And uh, so I took a little nap. <clears throat> so I don't, I don't know if I'm off or you're off today, but some, somebody's off, but God, God's going to help us. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12 says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickednesses in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. I want to uh, preach this morning about being prepared for the evil day. And being prepared for the evil day. I wonder if we could just ask the Lord to help us and talk to us today. Why don't you pray personally today that God, that God would speak to your heart. Hallelujah. Amen. Why don't you let the Lord know today, God, I want you to change me. Hallelujah. Change me, Lord. Work on me today, God. Hallelujah. 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 Man, you can be seated this morning. If I could get a little more monitor in this random microphone that I've got up here, hallelujah, that would help me, praise God, hallelujah, is everybody happy today, all right, you know I was thinking about um, 
how life is full of moments, and moments are not created equal. There are some moments that in our life that are very inconsequential. Um, there's things that we do, decisions that we make that really don't make a big, big difference in our lives, in our futures. But there are moments in our lives that as we go through life that have major impact on our, our futures, the direction that we are going, and the outcomes of our lives. And so, um, these important moments, uh, people spend a lot of time, a lot of years sometimes, preparing for important moments. Uh, many of you have probably seen uh, how young girls, even as a little girl, they'll, they'll begin to prepare for their wedding day, even as a, as a little girl. And uh, I, don't, I don't know what it is about uh, little girls. They want to prepare for their wedding. And they, they dream about it. They plan it. Because it is a, they recognize it even at a young age as being a very important moment in their lives. And, uh, and of course, we know that uh, the, the moment of marriage is a moment that affects our destiny. It affects our future. It affects the rest of our lives. And a moment like that is something that's really worth taking the time to prepare for. Yes. Amen. It matters who you marry. The most important decision you'll ever make besides getting the Holy Ghost, repenting of your sins, is who you're going to marry. It'll either make you or break you. Amen. It can be the thing that gets you in prison for murder or, or, get, or get you to just enjoy life. Like me. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Can y'all tell the difference? Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord. And so, uh, people uh, prepare for, for big, big moments. Um, you know, graduating. It's a big moment. It's a moment that's celebrated. Uh, retirement, that's another one. People spend their whole working lives many times thinking about retirement, thinking about the day that they're going to retire, <clears throat> and so on and so forth. There's moments in our lives that have, have major consequence, and so it uh, really matters. It's important that we take the time to make sure that we have put the time in, the effort in, and the preparation in to be prepared for those moments. But uh, what, what the Lord has put on my heart this morning is that in all of our preparation that we do in life, the moments that we prepare for and the moments that we recognize as having great importance in our lives, may we not forget to be prepared for the evil day that Paul talks about in the book of Ephesians chapter 6. So many uh, people, the, the common uh, belief is, is that uh, Paul, he, he was not talking about the evil day such as a, a day of uh, persecution or, or the last day, but rather evil as in the day of temptation, uh, the day of, of testing. Many times in, in the Bible, the uh, evil will be interchangeable for a testing, for a trial, for a hardship. Uh, and so Paul, when he's talking about withstanding in the evil day, uh, I believe that Paul 
He's talking about those moments in our lives that are not created equal with all the other moments in our lives. Uh, the day that's not the same as all of the other days. But there are days in our lives that we could categorize as an evil day. Just as we can categorize the day that you graduate, the day you retire, the day you're married. There's a day that you will face evil and temptation in your life. And it's very important that we are prepared for that moment. There's a day coming in every believer, every person in this room under the sound of my voice today. There's a day coming for every one of us that uh, if we're not prepared for it, if we, if we don't have some things settled already, then we're not going to make it. We're not going to withstand against the temptation and the trouble that coming that's coming. There's there's days that if uh, in all of our lives that if we're not prepared for them, if we've not taken the time to be ready for them, we can lose everything that we have ever worked for. We can lose everything that uh, all of the other days that we have prepared for, the big days and big moments. All of that can go out the window if we forget to prepare for the evil day, to be able to withstand an evil day. I think of the example of Moses, how that uh, there, there, was, there was big moments in Moses' life. There was, there was times that were, uh, had huge consequence. Uh, one of the uh, moments that we see for Moses was, you know, the day that he would choose to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of, of Egypt and the opulence of Egypt that he could have done. That was a big moment for Moses, and it made a, a big difference in his life. And we, we see where, where Moses, he spent 40 years on the backside of the wilderness, and it seems like it was 40 years uh, that was inconsequential, if you will. There was a whole lot of days that really didn't matter and didn't ma amount to anything on the backside of that wilderness. But uh, there was a day that he came to the burning bush, and it was a really big moment, what he did with that and the decision that he made. And I believe... Uh, it, it's, it's quite apparent in Scripture that the 40 years in the wilderness was a time of preparation uh, for, right, we could talk about the symbolism of 40 and 40 years, and it, it's a uh, it was a time of testing and, and preparation for that day that he would stand before God at the burning bush, and he would answer the call of God on his life. The reason that he was in the wilderness for 40 years was because of a moment that he lost his temper and he took matters into his own hands and uh, he uh, would kill uh, an Egyptian taskmaster, bury him in the sand. And that moment, that decision affected and changed the next 40 years of his life. And so uh, Moses, he had, he, had, uh, he had a lot of time to work on himself and to prepare himself from uh, that, that moment that he slipped, the moment of anger and the moment of uh, frustration. But yet, sadly, uh, it seems like he never... Uh, got the victory over his anger uh, because we see that uh, later on he would come down off of the mountain after being on top of the mountain for 40 days and nights and he would come down with the, the law of God, the tables of stone. And in a moment of anger and frustration, 
with the people of God. He would take those uh, stones and he would throw them down and break them. And then uh, he had to go back up the mountain and now he had to write the law again with his finger. Instead of it being God that wrote it like the first time, now Moses had to do the work himself the second time. And I, I'll stop right here and tell you that once you break the commandments, it's a lot harder afterwards to, to fix it, to write them again. Amen. And so here, here it is the second time we see that uh, what, what Moses decided to do in his frustration had major consequence in his life. And then finally, uh, when we think of the life of Moses, it was in a moment uh, of, again, of frustration when God had told him to speak to the rock. But out of his frustration for people grumbling and complaining and his anger, instead of speaking to the rock, he struck the rock out of anger, out of a la lack of self-control. And that moment of not, not controlling himself, that moment cost him everything that he had been working toward for all of those years. All of those years he had been working towards uh, making it into the promised land. But now because of one moment of anger, it caused him to miss out on the promise of God for his life. God said, Moses, you're going to be able to see it, but you're not going to experience it because of that moment right there. And I, I just kind of think, what would have happened if Moses would have spent that 40 years in the wilderness in preparation, and, he, and if he had made up his mind that whatever I got to do, I have got to fix this part in me that is causing me to, uh, my life to not be blessed and to be what it could be. To take the time to fix that part of himself. That way, when the moment came, when everything was at stake on the day of temptation, he could have said, no, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to lose control of myself. I'm not going to lose my, uh, my temper, but I'm going to control my spirit. And I'm going to uh, keep my, my heart right and keep my actions right. And what, what a difference it would have been. How different this, it would have been for Moses if he would have uh, been prepared. And he had prepared himself beforehand for that moment. Hallelujah. God help us today. That uh, we, would, we would understand that just because we're not being challenged today and just because we're not facing the temptation today and just because uh, we're not uh, in a, at a moment of great consequence right now, that does not mean it's not coming. But in fact, I will guarantee you it's coming. I guarantee you every person in this house, there's moments coming down the road that you're going to be tested and it's going to be the day of temptation and what you do matters very much in that moment of temptation. It matters for your family. It matters for your children. It matters for your future. It matters for your eternity because it, it can take an entire lifetime to build a life and to build uh, a reputation but it just takes 30 minutes to destroy it. It just takes 30 minutes in a moment of stress, in a moment of frustration, in a moment of temptation, in a moment of not thinking straight. Just 30 minutes to throw everything out the window. And so somehow we've got to be prepared so that when we are under the, the, the pressure of the evil day that we can withstand what the enemy is trying to bring against us. 
that we can withstand the attack. Hallelujah. Hey, you may go 40 years and not need this sermon today. But can I tell you, there is a day coming you're going to need what I'm preaching. Hallelujah. We, uh, we look at David. We look at the life of David and we see that David, uh, one of the greatest, most important moments in his life was when he faced Goliath, when he faced the giant. David, he was prepared for that giant. David was not unprepared. He was not caught off guard, if you will. But David had already passed the test and he was ready uh, to face that Goliath that would stand in the valley and uh, hurl insults at him. We see um, clearly in the scripture that when that moment of testing came, when the day of evil came for, for David, uh, that he had already been preparing. Uh, when nobody was around and nobody was looking, he had been preparing for uh, that fight and for that, that day of evil. We see that he slew a lion and a bear already when Saul would... Uh, ask him what made him think he was qualified or prepared, if you will, to face the giant. Uh, David, he said, when I was keeping my, the sheep and a lion and a bear arose out to take one of the sheep, he said, I slew the lion and the bear. And he, and, and he knew that uh, if I can slay the lion and the bear and the God that uh, gave me the victory over the lion and the bear is the same God that will... Give me the victory over the giant. There was something in his spirit, in his attitude, in his faith that was prepared to take on that battle. Because he had already won some battles in secret. He had already won some battles in private. I want you to know that the things that you face in pri private are preparing you for things you're going to face in public. Amen. That things that you face when nobody's around and nobody's watching, what you do with that moment is going to determine what you do when everybody's watching and everybody's around. And I want to challenge us today. I want to stir us up today that we got to be prepared for the evil day. Hallelujah. We got to be prepared for the day that the enemy of our soul is trying to bring us down. We see that. When Saul put the, uh, his armor on David, that uh, David, he said, I, I, can't, I can't wear this. I can't do this because I have not proved them. He was saying, I, I, I've not uh, had the time. I've not made preparation, if you will, with this armor. Uh, I've not, I'm not spent time with it. I've not learned how to use it. I'm not... Uh, uh, I'm not in a place where I feel comfortable and ready in the heat of a battle to do this. And this indicates to us that he had proved his slingshot method. <laughs> because he was willing to use the slingshot, but he was not willing to use Saul's armor. And uh, it just kind of shows to us that David, this wasn't his first time to sling a stone with that slingshot. But it shows us that he had done it many times over and over and over. I'm going to tell you the first time to learn how to sling a stone with your slingshot is not when the giant is coming at you. That's not the time that, to learn to pray. That's not the time to learn uh, to be obedient to the word of God, to be submitted. Hallelujah. That's not the time to prove the weapons that we have. But the time to do it is today. Is go ahead and start practicing. Hallelujah. Go, you you, you got to start practicing your praying today. You got to start practicing your submission today. Because there's a day coming. You're going to be under pressure. And everything that can be shaken, it will be shaken. And so you got to already know what it's like to be submitted, to pray, to do the will of God. Hallelujah. And he knew exactly what stones he needed. He went to the, the brook. He pulled out five smooth stones. He knew how they should feel. 
He knew what kind of stones. He knew how many stones. And all of that came from preparation. And this shows us that a good soldier, he knows that the time to put on the armor and prove the armor, it's not in the moment of a battle. It's not in the moment that you're facing the enemy. It's not in the moment that you've got a temptation trying to bring you down. This was one of the most pivotal moments in all of King David's life. This, uh, this moment matters so much. He'd already been anointed as king of Israel. But yet, it was this moment of victory is the thing that really propelled him forward in his life. And in what God had called him to do. Because when he won that victory, they would, they would sing that song. Saul has slain his thousands, but David has slain his tens of thousands. And that was the thing that started the jealousy in Saul. And that was the thing that uh, 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 caused uh, things to progress, if you will. And for David to begin to really earn favor with the people of Israel. Hallelujah. God help us today. I want to be prepared for, for those moments in life. Amen. When, when you think you're just coming to deliver bread to your brothers, but instead you find out, you find yourself in a fight. You find yourself in a temptation. You find yourself in an evil day. God help us. I, I want to I wanna have, uh, know then that I've already been uh, getting victory over the lion. And I've already been getting victory over the bear. And I've already been praying. And I've already been practicing with my slingshot. Hallelujah. I wonder if somebody knows what I'm preaching about here today. Hallelujah. Hey, the time to, to, the time to, to be prepared is right now. It's before you face the moment. It's before those things come against you. And in Ephesians chapter 6, Paul is giving instructions on how to withstand in the evil day. He is uh, telling us what we got to do. He's telling us that there's a day coming. Every, every child of God is going to be tested. Uh, your, your preparation means everything. Your preparation determines whether or not you're going to stand or whether you're going to make it. Hallelujah. And he said, the first, the first thing he said was, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, rulers, and darkness, and high places. And so, you, you know, one of the things that we all have got to prepare ourselves with for the battle and, 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 and you know what, we all have, a, have to have an understanding of if we're going to be able to withstand in the evil day. We have to have a revelation that our fight is not with people. Let me say it again. We have to have a revelation, a revelation, and we got to get it in ourselves deep, and we got to settle it in our minds, we got to settle it in our heart, we got to settle it in our spirit, that before the day of I face pressure, before the day I face the temptation to think that this is about people, I got to go ahead uh, on, a, on a just a nice, relaxing Sunday morning uh, and make up in my mind uh, that my fight uh, is not uh, against people. It's not against my brother. It's not against my sister. Uh, but our fight uh, is against uh, the demons of hell. Uh, it's against the rulers of darkness uh, in high places. Oh, God, help us today to understand if we don't know what we're fighting in the moment, we're going to fight the wrong thing. If we, don't, if we don't have a clear revelation 
of what, of what we're facing and what we are fighting, then we will bring damage to ourselves and to others in the moment of temptation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. There's, there's just some things that doesn't even need a response to that person. But sometimes you just got to respond to hell. Hallelujah. And, and so, sometimes you just got to realize, you just got to realize and not be ignorant of, the, of Satan's devices. Hallelujah. If you're not careful, you'll find yourself in a fight with your brother instead of in a fight with the adversary. Hallelujah. You'll find yourself confronting your brother or sister instead of confronting yourself. And so we have to know, we have to know what we're fighting. We have to know that our, when our brothers are throwing us in the pit, that it's really not our brothers throwing us in the pit. But there's, hey, let me tell you, there's a bigger thing going on. There's a bigger fight going on. Hallelujah. And it's the fight between good and evil. And there's a God in heaven uh, that's got his hand on our lives. Uh, and there's a God in heaven uh, that says, I'm setting up the plan for your destiny uh, and for your future. Hallelujah. Hey, I'm telling you, uh, it's not people that sell us into slavery, uh, but it's God that lets it happen. Uh, and what the devil meant for you, hey, it was the devil trying to intend it for evil, uh, but God. God meant it for good. You can take people out of the picture and you can put God in their place. You can put, you can put the enemy in their place. Hallelujah. Hey, why we see we the Bible clearly tells us do not be afraid of what man can do to you. Hallelujah. Let me tell you what the will of God is for every one of us. That we never be afraid of what a man can do to us. Hallelujah. Because the, the only, if, if we're going to fear anything, Jesus said, let, it, let us fear what can be done to our soul. Hallelujah. And so, uh, why, why would I be afraid of what a man would try to do to me if I'm prepared with the breastplate of righteousness. Why, why would I be afraid of an accusation that, that somebody would make against me if I'm prepared with the breastplate of righteousness? The breastplate of righteousness there is not, it's not talking about the righteousness of Jesus Christ, but it's talking about the righteousness of good character. Hallelujah. Hey, if I know I've been doing the right thing, and I know, hallelujah, that behind closed doors I'm doing what's right, then you can say whatever you want to say. You can do whatever you want to do. Because I got a revelation of what it is that we're fighting, and it's not people. Hallelujah. I got a revelation that, that nobody can do anything against the truth, uh, only for the truth. Uh, did you know that it, no man can stop the truth? Uh, no man can stop the church. Uh, oh, devil, you're a liar. Huh? Hey, you know what we're going to do today? Uh, we're preparing ourselves. Uh, hey, we're not afraid of men. Uh, we're not afraid of women. Uh, we're not fighting men and women, uh, but we're fighting the enemy. Uh, we're pressing forward uh, in, in the realm of the spirit, uh, and we're having revival. Uh, we don't fight with men, but we pray to God. Hallelujah. 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 Many, many times, many times uh, the answer is, is to just uh, look at ourselves, deny ourselves. You know, then, and there's, there's got to be, there's got to be some sort of preparation for that. Or else you'll be caught off guard in the moment. Amen. Sometimes, sometimes I'm. Almost caught off guard in the moment myself. Sometimes you just, uh, you know, it's like you get, you get an, an attack. 
And what happens is before you know it, you know, you're, you're in fight mode. And if you, don't, if you don't have this revelation already down pat, then you're going you're gonna to get mixed up. And you'll cause yourself a lot of problems. Hallelujah. Amen. I just love the example of David and how when Shimei, Shimei was throwing stones at him. <laughs> and you know what he did? He said, oh, that's just God. That's just the Lord trying to, he's trying to chastise me. That's God. God's trying to line me out. God's trying to deal with me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Didn't even, didn't even uh, uh, bring judgment on Shimei. He could have had Shimei. He could have spoke one word and Shimei would have been killed. But, he, but why, why would you kill a man when, it, when the man ain't the one behind it? Why would you try to kill a man when it's God trying to do it? Hallelujah. You know, it's amazing when, when you can just have that revelation. And in the moment, when, when, if you don't think David was a man, then you just don't know the kind of man David was. David was a bloody man. He was a warrior. He was a fighter. David wasn't weak. Him turning his, him, him turning his head away from Shimei, it wasn't because he was afraid and weak. But I submit to you, it was because David was strong and David had a good revelation and an understanding, uh, hallelujah, of the battle that he was fighting in the moment. Uh, it was a spiritual battle, not a, not a battle against flesh and blood, but it was a spiritual battle. Why don't we lift our hands right now? Hallelujah. Lord, prepare me, God. Lord, prepare me, God, for the moment. Uh, hallelujah, that shimmy eyes throwing the stones. Uh, God, prepare me, Lord, right now. Let me get it centered on my mind. Uh, when my brothers are throwing me in the pit, uh, that you're gonna, your will's going to be done in my life, God. Uh, hallelujah, that your plan's going to prosper in my life. <laughs> hallelujah. I, I've told people, I've told people before, like, and, 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 and here's how it is. You say, well, you know, just you, you got you to gotta deal with that person. You know, he, uh, let me, if David would have killed Shimei, you know what would have happened? If that was God doing it, God, he would have just sent another man to throw rocks. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. There's just, if, if, God's, if God's the one doing it, you, you can kill your brothers and, and he'll make it so someone else throws you in the pit. Hallelujah. Man, y'all are quiet. Am I, I'm not preaching confusing, am I? I don't know, I'm tired, so. I, I just want to make sure I'm not asleep right now and I think I'm preaching. I told Sister Linda today, Sister Linda, you just watch. This may be the first time I fall asleep while I'm preaching. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> and so, you, you, know, you know what we're doing on days like this on Sunday morning? We're preparing ourselves. We're getting prepared for when, when, the, when the heat is on. When the pressure's on. Brother Holmes, he always said, the time to put rafters in your attic is not when it's storming. Amen. Hallelujah. It's not, not in the middle of a hurricane. But the time to do it is when the sun is shining. That's the time to prepare. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's Because there's, there's a day coming. Oh, Lord. When you're, you're angry and you're mad. Did you know that when you get mad that it shuts off the, the part of your brain that thinks? Hallelujah. So you got you to gotta go ahead and, and make up your mind right now. I'm going to keep my brain on in the, in the moment. <clears throat> Paul, he's telling us we got to be prepared to withstand in the day of temptation. Hallelujah. It's, there's big moments coming. 
there's important moments. I was, I was um, consulting with a great pastor, getting advice. I get a lot of advice. You know, Sam Walton, he said everything at Walmart, he stole it from somebody else. Every idea, you know, the ways of doing things. He found somebody else doing it, and he put it all together. And uh, that's kind of how I pastor. <laughs> Amen. I, I call pastors, and I steal their ideas. And now, and I, I, don't, I don't call pastors with people with, you know, churches of 50 people. But I call the ones that's got 900 people. Hallelujah. 2,000 people. <laughs> Guess who that is? And so, one uh, one one great pastor. He uh, he told me, he said, you know, it's it's these moments right here, it's these moments that really matter, and it's these moments that really determine uh, what 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 you're going to be and what you're going to become. How you navigate these situations, it's when it's hard, when you're mad, when you're frustrated, Moses. It's those moments that you better really take a step back and be careful. Because because you you can you can mess things up. Uh, you know, they say that it's Rough seas is what makes a sailor. It's anybody can sail when the seas are smooth. Any, anybody can sail when the weather's good and, and everything's fine and everything's smooth. But what really matters is in the middle of a storm, in the middle of a trouble, in the middle of the wind beating on the boat and the waves crashing against the boat on every side. That is what really matters. That's, that's the moments you've got to be prepared for as you sail through your life. And so it is for every one of us here. Hallelujah. Hey, there's a day coming when those waves are going to be crashing against the boat. And it's going to be crashing against your life. And the winds are going to be beating and the rain's coming. And you're going to be angry and frustrated and upset and confused, uh, hallelujah, but can I tell you, in those moments, uh, you just got to hang on to the word of God and say, I'm not basing what I do on my feelings. Uh, I'm basing it on what does the word of God say. In those moments, we got to just step back uh, and say, God, uh, I don't trust my own actions. Uh, God, I don't trust what I feel. Uh, I don't trust uh, what I want to do in my flesh. Uh, but God, I trust your word. Can I tell you, this has been proven uh, and this has been tested. Uh, you know what's got me through the difficult moments? It's because I already learned a long time ago that this book, it works. This Bible, it works. It may, I may come to a day in my life where it seems like this is the exception to the rule. But I just got to step back and say, no, there's no exceptions. There's no caveats. This is the word of God. And it'll get us through every storm and every trouble. Oh, let's lift our hands and give the Lord praise today. Uh, hallelujah. 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 He said the preparation of the gospel of peace, the, the preparation, the readiness of the gospel of peace. We, we got we to gotta be ready. We got to have it. We got we to gotta know what, what gospel it is that we're bringing. Amen. We can't, we can't switch weapons in the middle of the battle. If the gospel of peace is what you preach in the time of peace, then it should be what you preach in the day of evil. Hallelujah. If, if, if it's the gospel of peace that works in times of peace, then it's the gospel of peace that's going to work in the times of evil. You know, if, if you're going to have peace, if you're going to have peace, you know you got to have war. you gotta, you got to fight for peace. 
There's no such thing as peace without fighting. That, that's the paradox. You got to fight for peace. Hallelujah. But you got to know what you're fighting. You're fighting the spirits of division. Hallelujah. You're, you're fighting the, the forces that oppose peace and that don't want peace. Hallelujah. Oh, God, help us today. Amen. Because we, uh, we, got, we got a mission. And our mission is the gospel of peace. That's our mission. That's what we're doing. We got our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. That is our goal. That is our desire. It's to be a holy people that follows peace with all men as much as is possible. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Did you know that uh, uh, not following peace with men can get you to not see the Lord as quick as not having holiness can? Hey, what comes with holiness is we got to have peace with our brethren as much as is possible. And I tell you, we, we, it's gotta, we, we gotta be prepared for it. Have your loins girt about with truth. Here, here it is. And, I, and I'm, I'm finishing with this. Having your loins girt about with truth. Girding the loins is what soldiers, they did in preparation for battle. It was, they, it was the practice of taking their robes and uh, I don't know if that goes to being done, but come on, Sister Rutler, don't make him feel good. <clears throat> and they would take their robes and they would tie their robes up, cinch it with a belt. And that would keep uh, anything from uh, obstructing their, uh, their running, their jumping on a horse, their fighting. And so <clears throat> girding up the loins was uh, something that a man would do number one and you know that pants the the wearing of pants was for the purpose uh the, the same kind of purpose of girding up the loins in the old testament that's why pants are men's apparel is for the purpose of them being free in battle free to jump on the horse free to do what men do hallelujah and so women didn't gird up their loins men girded up their loins Amen. I just thought I'd throw that in. And so, um, in, all, in all of our preparation, one thing that we got to get settled is that we are going to be people who love the truth. We're going to be people who love the truth. Because there's moments when truth will really hurt our feelings. There's moments when truth are going to really go against how we feel. Am I right today? If, if there's one thing for certain that we can know is that truth, it doesn't always feel good. But truth will make you free. And it's truth that liberates us. It's truth that keeps us from being ensnared and trapped in battle. And it's, uh, it's too late to gird up your loins with truth in the moment of battle. When, when the enemy's coming at you and he's whacking you with his sword, <laughs> it's too late to say, oh, hold on a minute, this ain't fair. It, to, to say, I, I got I to gotta get my belt of truth on. It's too late. It's, it's something that we got to do beforehand. We got to prepare for as a church beforehand that truth is going to be what gives me freedom on the battlefield. Freedom is what's going to prepare me. Uh, truth is what's going to prepare, prepare me on the, the battlefield. And uh, we, we got we to gotta make up our mind uh, Brother Larry Booker preached a great message one day. It was, I made this decision when I was in my right mind. And it's really the same thing I'm preaching today. Is that we got to make decisions when we're in our right mind about what we're going to do when we're not in our right mind. 
There's got to be some things we get settled in our heart today that says uh, when truth is being declared in my life uh, that I'm going to go with truth and not my feelings. Uh, I'm going to go with truth uh, and not what the pressure and the frustration and the anger. Oh, God, help us uh, that no matter where we get caught off guard, that there'll be something inside of us uh, that says, I want truth in this moment. Uh, I want truth to guide me up. With what I'm facing right now. Hallelujah. I, I have learned. I already, I already got this figured out. I got some things settled today, Sister Priscilla. Hallelujah. I always look at you because you, you smile. Amen. I, I, I have to overlook some people because I can't even tell if, if you're alive. That's exactly what I was going to say. You're ahead of me, Brother Waggis. I say, Lord, have mercy. You know, some of y'all need to ask yourself, what would this church be if everybody here was exactly like me? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Jesus, help me. I, I, I got some things settled in my mind right now. I, I, I have some things figured out. I prepared my heart and my mind. Just because I'm mad doesn't mean I'm justified. And, and just because I uh, have opinions doesn't mean that it's facts and that it's right. There are some things I've got settled in my mind that uh, just, just because I am used to doing it a certain way doesn't mean that's the right way. I'm talking about myself today. I want to... I want to always remember and keep the attitude of a, of a teachable attitude and a teachable spirit. That when I am faced with new information, and I, I'm faced with something that I, with truth that I've not uh, yet seen or understood. That when I'm faced with that, that even in the moment of human self trying to rise up, that I will be a person that can be easily imposed on by the word of God. The Bible says that you'll receive the word of God with meekness. With meekness, it's able to save your soul. Hallelujah. You can start playing a little bit. Go ahead and put them the rest of the way asleep. Receive the word of God with meekness. Hallelujah. God, give us a love for the truth of your word. I know a man spent years of his life, a great, great ministry. Powerful and used and respected and admired. But as, as happens for all of us, he was... He, he found himself in a moment, uh, in, a, in a battle, in a fight. And they, they call it punch drunk. When you're, when you're punch drunk, you, uh, Mike Tyson, he said, everybody's got a plan until you get punched in the face. And then, uh, in, in that moment, in that moment, of, you know, hurt feelings and that moment of pressure. Uh, it's, it's like he lost sight of what he was even fighting. And he started fighting people that loved him. He started fighting his own brothers. He started, he started fighting people that were, were above him. People that God put in his life. Elders to give him direction. And, and he opposed them, and he fought them, and, and could not stop and listen to the voice of truth and reason. And said, just became more and more determined, and more and more hard-headed. And brought, brought about great suffering, and it was a time of great consequence. 
Hallelujah. And I already got my mind made up that there's, there's some people in my life that I'm going to listen to. There's some people in my life that when they tell me, they cry, I got my mind made up right now. Hallelujah. I said, I got my mind made up right now. That there's, there's, there's some people that if they'll speak into my life, I'll say, I'll say, I'll change what I'm doing. I'll change the direction I'm going. No matter how much I feel like it's the right thing. God, Lord, I'm willing to be meek and I'm willing to be humble. God, I'm willing to let you speak to me. Hallelujah. You know what I, you know what I appreciate about this church so much? Hallelujah. You know, what I, you know what I love and admire about you people so much? Is that when, when, I, when I came to this church a couple of years ago, and you, you didn't even know me. And no, no doubt, you don't, you don't even have really any reason to trust me. And that's fine. Because those things are earned over time. Hallelujah. But it, it, was, a, it was a moment of emotions. It was a moment of stress and confusion, uh, worry, hallelujah. But the thing that I admire about the people in this church is that when I just come behind this pulpit and I would preach the word of God and I would preach truth, hallelujah. And even though, even though in, in our, uh, our, our moments of emotions, it's, that's when it's the most difficult. But can I tell you, that's what matters. And that's the reason we're having the revival we're having. And that's the reason this church has grown like it has. It's because thank God for men that will listen. Hallelujah. Thank God for men that will value the word of God. Hallelujah. Men that say, hey, if you'll, if you'll preach to me what's in that Bible, that's going to trump my feelings. If you'll preach to me what's in that Bible, that's going to trump the way I, that I think it should be done and the way I've been doing it. Oh, God, help me. Hallelujah. God, help me. Lord, put it, put it in us deeper than ever, God. Put it in the spirit of this church, God. Hey, I, you don't, you don't got to trust the man, but you can trust the word of God because you've been proving it. And you've seen it. Hey, can I tell you, what kind of church would we be if we believed we had it all figured out and that we didn't need times of correction from the word of God? No, we all need times of correction. And I'm preaching about being prepared for the day when everything is attacking uh, what we believe and what we know. In those moments, we got to make up in our mind, hallelujah, that I'm going to live by the word of God. Hallelujah. Stand together with me today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I cannot tell you. I got to tell you how many marriages would have been saved. That people would have already prepared themselves and made up in their mind. That I'm, I'm going to value truth more than I value my feelings and my emotions. I'm going to gird my loins up with, with, with truth and be prepared. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That there'd be somebody that could speak into my life and set me straight and turn me around. Did you know that truth has to be sought out? You gotta seek truth. If you wait for me to come and tell you the truth, you're 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 gonna wait until you're in the grave. I'm it don't always happen that way. Amen. Jesus, he didn't do it. If you don't come to me and ask me. And I'm probably not going to come to you and tell you. Probably not. I might. And I have, haven't I? Don't say amen. But truth is, it's got to be something you love so much. That even when you're afraid of the answer you're going to get. That you're willing to seek for it. And have an open heart. I can't tell you how many churches would have been saved. How much more revival there would have been if men would have just already made up in their minds that 
truth is going to take precedent over my pride. Hallelujah. Help us today, Lord. Hallelujah. Help us today, Lord. God, speak to our hearts. Lord, prepare us today, God. Prepare our hearts and our minds, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Help us today, God. Hallelujah. Why don't we just lift our hands all over this house. Amen. And let's just tell the Lord, oh, God. Give me a love for truth, Lord. Hallelujah. God, I'm putting on the whole armor of God today. Praying always. Prayer and supplication because I'm preparing myself. Lest I enter into temptation. Preparing myself for the evil day, God. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, today I'm preparing myself. God, I'm, I'm taking on the sword of the Spirit, God. Hallelujah. Oh, why don't you just humble yourself under the mighty hand of God this morning and say, Lord, uh, you can correct me, God. You can teach me. You can talk to me, Lord. I'm keeping a teachable spirit and teachable attitude, Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, help me not to bristle up. <laughs> Hallelujah. God, help me not to fight the wrong things, God. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Oh, uh, yes. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some of you are not prepared with your loins skirt about with truth. Hallelujah. Some of you are not prepared for truth to come into your life because the truth that already has come into your life, some of you, You've not, you've not responded to that. And you're, some of you are not doing what you know to be true. Hallelujah. But I pray that, God, that you could just surrender your heart to the Lord today and say, God, oh, Lord, work on me, God. Lord, prepare me today, God. Hallelujah. If it's appropriate, reach over and join with somebody today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, this is just the moment today where we prepare ourselves. You know what you're doing today? You're, you're proving the armor. You're proving it today. Hallelujah. Uh, yes. Come on, somebody needs to try it on today. Somebody needs to try on that meekness to the word of God. Hallelujah. Somebody needs to get familiar with how it feels to deny yourself.